I'm going to show you a very exciting position in which you have to calculate from the beginning till the end. If this is the first time watching my channel, make sure to subscribe for more interesting content in order to become a better chess player and better at calculating to outfox your opponent. Let's have a look at the following position S. Here it is, white to play. You have to find out what is the best move for white. And in fact, it's not only about finding the best move, you have to calculate a little bit further. Let's go together and see how to approach this position. First of all, we are going to orientate ourselves on this position. As we see that both sides have quite a number of pieces directed at the opponent's king. For instance, the black king is standing there, but it's mainly guarded still by that knight in front of it. It's the most important defender. If that knight wouldn't be there, look, this rook is eyeing the black king and things are potentially really dangerous. What should Y do? Well, there are various possibilities, but what is the best move? Well, I was thinking first, maybe I can just open up the path for my knight so that the rook is hitting that knight on c7. The knight cannot take it. Things are looking really dangerous. But is black really going to defend against it? Or is there a counterattack? Well, there's no good way to defend the knight, to support it. But the problem is that now it's black who's going to give a check first. With the move queen h2, it's checkmate. Because the white king is unable to run away. The bishop on a6 covers the f1 square. And therefore, this is what we call checkmate. The queen, of course, cannot be taken as it's supported by both the rook and the knight. So let's take it back. We understand now that black is having a very big threat. If black were to play in this position, it would just be checkmate. Should white try to defend against the threat? Or is there something else white can do? Well, my advice is always look at forcing moves first. That's what I teach in all my videos, that you have to look first at checks, captures, and generate new threats. Well, by far the most forcing type of move is giving a check. Because once your opponent is in a check, the defender got to react to it. So we are going to look for checks now. That's the main idea. Well, it's why to play and are there any good checks? Well, not too many. You can take with a bishop here the pawn, but black is just going to recapture it. That's not a good capture. How about queen taking the knight? Well, you don't want to lose your queen, right? But... Okay, you're at least eliminating the main defender of the black king. And it's a really forcing move, as there's only one way to stop the check, and that is by recapturing with the king. King takes queen. Now black is a queen up, and if you're really slow, well, the threat of giving checkmate by black, it's still in the air, so there's no time to rest. Black got to act immediately. Sorry, white got to act immediately, of course. And now, how to do that? The move knight b5 check, that's a very nice move. You could also have gone to d5, but knight b5 is better. You want to keep the files for both your rooks open. Here we see, first of all, that the rook is giving a check as well as the knight. So it's a double check. Well, with a double check, you know one thing for sure, the king has to move. Black is not able to take that knight because then the rook is still giving a check. So where should the king go to? Well, there are not many options. The king can't go to the d-file as the rook on d1 is covering these squares. The king can't stay on the c-file because of the other rook on c1. Can the king go to b6? Definitely not because the bishop is guarding that square. So that means the only move is king to b8. Very important moment. Here we are going to look at possible checks again. What are the options? Well, you can give a check with your bishop in two possible ways. You can take the pawn or you can give a check there. But wait a second. If you take the pawn in the corner, well, there is king a8 and the, the king is relatively safe. This knight is not able to give a good check. If the knight moves, we take the bishop. The bishop is gone, the attack is over. That's also very typical that once you have sacrificed a lot of material, it should be made really quickly because... Sacrificing more material is usually not going to be working. Well, let's then look at the alternative. There is this option to play the move bishop f4. Things are looking really dangerous. This bishop is giving a check. The king can go into the corner. But there are other options as well, including to block with your knight or even block with your rook. Things are not too clear at all. Wait a second. 
if the bishop gives check and the rook blocks, the problem is the other rook is also helping in defense. Black is just going to win the game. Let's take it back. What should we do then instead? Deflect the defender. Very important attacking technique as well. This rook on e8, it's a very important defender of the back rank. And if we deflect it with a move rook d8, we are forcing black to take. The king can't go anywhere. Rook takes d8, only move. And now we can give a check with our bishop. And here another very big difference is shown as black no longer is controlling this e5 square with both its uh, knight and the rook. So how should black defend? Well, if you go with your king into the corner, now it's knight c7 check. The king can now go back to the b8 square as the knight is, of course, obst obstructing the range of the bishop on f4. Only move. But then the knight, if it goes away, we know that it will be a check by the bishop. So it's knight takes a6 with a double check again. This time it's the knight and the bishop who are both giving a check. That means, pardon me, that after king a8, we are back in a critical position. The knight can give a check again. King b8, what is white gonna do? This may be a repetition of moves. And of course, that's not a bad result considering that white is uh, a queen down and uh, black would normally be able to win the game. So going back, it's a double check will lead to a repetition of moves. But whenever you are in such situation that you know that the knight is able to move around and wherever it goes, it's gonna be a check Consider all your options. That's very important. There are so many squares the knight can actually go to. And here the trick is that the knight would love to go back to d5. Very nice, subtle move. It is a check. This time, the king doesn't have to move. Black may even consider blocking the check with either the knight. But okay, if the knight blocks, you're able to take it because the rook is no longer on e8 supporting that square. The rook can also block on d6. This is not gonna help black at all. There is bishop takes d6 with check. The king can go into the corner. And now, are there any other checks? Well, the knight can go back to c7, but we basically have seen that pattern already. That's gonna be a repetition one more time. But the key move is to give another check. Never rule out a strange looking move. You put a knight on the b6 square, it's a check. The king can't go anywhere because the bishop covers the b8 square, but the pawn is able to take that knight. Another piece is gone, but after this exchange, the a file has been opened and the rook may now come over to a1. It is a check and it's a beautiful mating pattern as the king has been caught in the corner of the board. I hope you found this very important, useful content and then I will definitely cover more of these kind of calculation exercises. They will help you to become a better player. So what do we take away from this example? Always look at forcing moves, look at even at strange moves and make sure that it is a forcing move because otherwise the opponent may just be faster, overtake the initiative. And in worst case, you can even be checkmated yourself. But if you're first and look for these checks, you will be successful in chess. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.